Hello guys, welcome to back to my channel. Today we are talking about uh, data migration tools. Uh, so where exactly we need uh, data migration tools or why do we need to have a knowledge about data migration tools? Uh, this is very important because uh, when we are going to provision towards cloud, we need to move our data, we need to move our applications to the cloud. It's easy to move your applications because it's just re-hosting your applications into another infrastructure. Right, but how? What about the existing data, existing workload? If you want to move from your local on-premise uh, to Azure, AWS, or GCP, so we'll be talking about uh, three different uh, parameters in here. So the data migration uh, options uh, on cloud will be taken up in three different uh, ways. So one is offline method, another is online, and uh, the third one is a hybrid uh, hybrid way of doing it. So, so the offline is more of, you know, you have your data from your on-premise, you copy on a hard drive on a USB stick or CDs or DVDs. Uh, if you have around 100 TB of data, you need to copy that particular data and then send this particular, uh, that the hard drive or hard disk to Azure or to AWS or GCP. Or what you can do is like you can choose or say Azure, AWS or any of the cloud vendors to send their own particular disks where you actually can copy and send them back. Okay, so uh, so how you're going to choose which particular method you're going to go when when you're going to go for offline method, when you're going to go for online method and when you're going to go for an, uh, an hybrid method. So what are the parameters which actually be a you know would be a decision factor for you to take up this particular call so if we define the data migration uh, process we can actually differentiate into type so what type of data you want to transfer and uh, what is amount of data you want to transfer and what is a time frame you're looking in for okay so if the time frame is very lesser then you obviously have a choice of using hybrid or online and uh, if the time frame is a little bit okay or you know like it it can take or it is larger than the uh, time where your particular data would uh, can be transported offline okay and uh, there are two other factors like uh, a simple thumb release if your amount of data for which you are looking for to transfer is greater than 100 tb to 450 TB then you can use offline method uh, and then but on top of this particular factor I would like to add another uh, another factor is if uh, you want to choose your own uh, own particular device like hard disk or something for which you want to use to transport uh, choose yours if your data is 1 TB uh, I mean less than 1 TB or equal to 1 TB and if it is more than 1 TB it's always you know uh, you can go with uh, um, the the cloud vendor appliance uh, appliance and then you can load your data in there and then you can send that particular data to them, that particular appliance to them so what happens if you choose your own uh, own device or own appliance to put up a copy all of your on-premise data then you can actually choose uh, two options so one is like they can uh, after completing uh, completing it and they will reset and they will send uh, the data uh, the device to you or they can purge that device or just recycle that particular network device or the appliance device i can say storage device uh, so this is these are three particular addition factors on which uh, you know uh, interviewers can ask you like how would you data migrate your solutions or your workload or your data from your on-premise to uh, cloud uh, so if you compare uh, uh, among uh, all of these uh, particular vendors uh, so azure uh, for 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 data migrating or uh, you know migrating the workload uh, from on-premise to uh, Azure, uh, we have something called as Azure Migrate, which will give the assessment uh, of what is a workload you have in an you know, on-premise and what sort of uh, uh, a workload it would spin on Azure. And if you have any network limitations or if you want to make it a part of VNet or something it would try to take that particular data from you and then like where it would uh, say to provision that particular resource on Azure and then uh, carry this Azure Migrate to pull this particular data and put in there. Uh, so the other method is ASR. So ASR or Azure Site Recovery you can use and uh, I would put up the link where uh, uh, we have a brief description about you know uh, how we have moved uh, the workload from VMA to Azure. 
okay so that is a part of our brain tomic, uh, brainstorming sessions uh, hope that would you would like to watch that particular video i would leave a link and then in iws we have something called as cloud endure uh, so it's again a partner with aws uh, who help you to uh, transfer your vm workload either from hyper v or from vmware uh, to uh, aws and in gcp they have something called as vm migrate uh, internal service which can be used to migrate uh, your vm workload to azure and in case of databases we have uh, with azure we have azure database migration services or dms uh, and another thing is like um, what other thing you can do is like you can do the db backup database backup from your on-premise by simply taking a backup of your database from your on-premise into azure storage and then uh, go to your portal and then restore it as a SQL pass service on Azure by just uh, picking up the disk from the storage. So that is one particular quick way which can be self-service uh, uh, item as well. And in AWS, the AWS data migration service, it's, it also works very similar to this one. It's again a tool uh, which would help you to assess and you know take your database or find the right database SQLs on AWS and um, gcp it's like more they do with partners the partners has good integration uh, they help uh, uh, to move the, the workload to gcp from on premise so i would i would be speaking about the partners who are there and in case of no sql databases like unstructured data or if you have file shares or persistent volumes in that cases like um, you can use storage migration service in azure and um, in case of AWS, there are numerous number of services for this. Like you have AWS Data Sync, you have AWS Snowball. Uh, it's like AWS Snow Family, which is one particular thing is Snowball you can use uh, to to migrate your workload, your NoSQL databases from on-premise to uh, cloud. And uh, again, with GCP, we have a lot of partner tools. Uh, the one which I will talk about is Comprise and if you go ahead uh, so how exactly these assessment tools gonna look so when you go for an option of an online uh, with azure you have something called as azure migrate so you can see the option like uh, you can use this particular tool to assess your current workload what you have at on premise uh, so it we you can once you attach it like obviously there would be a pre-configuration which we needed to connect uh, at the, this particular portal to uh, talk to the servers everything and then it would um, show that how many servers you have at on-premise databases you have and what are the uh, you know uh, these are like this sort of goal which you want to uh, migrate to Azure so once you do that you will be able to see the all all of the items in here and since I said you need to run some agents or demons which actually recognize your services which are at on-premise so that would be in the discovered items and if you look more into it so what it uh, does is like it would uh, once you this is assessment page which would uh, show what are the instances which are uh, there uh, with you and it would show what are ready for azure migrate like which what particular service which can be migrated readily and um, and ready with conditions and other particular thing and then it also shows the cost estimation if you move this workload to azure and also the storage uh, pricing estimate estimations like in case of you're using ssd or premium disks like what would be opting for a premium disks in azure but rather you have something as hdd in your on-prem then what is the difference so these are good thing but uh, this is mostly with the online um, online way of uh, transferring your data and in AWS I would talk about uh, uh, as I said there is an acquisition of Cloud Endure uh, so so the Cloud Endure was helping customers to uh, migrate their particular data uh, online uh, to AWS so you can see it's very similar to Azure Migrate uh, in Azure so you need to give all the type of you know what is a mission type subnet everything and then IP address also it would pick up and then it will just uh, it will have something called as replication setting and uh, which will have the time when it need to backup or you know transfer uh, from your on-premise to Azure as well and then we have uh, the similarly uh, this one is uh, snowball and uh, these are the this are you can see the screen of snowball uh, is also one particular offering 
uh, Snowball, which is uh, which transfers your NoSQL databases to Azure, and it's an online way of transferring. And uh, and then if you go more ahead, then you can see like how exactly Snowball uh, would uh, show you options of you know pushing your network attached NAS storage from your on-premise to AWS in any of the regions and put a, put it onto. Amazon S3 or Amazon file systems, Elastic file systems. So if NAS has something called as you know a storage of blob sort of content, it would always push onto Amazon S3. And if you have file shares in your local, and then that would be replicated onto Amazon Elastic file system. So this is a one with AWS and with uh, as we talked. Uh, with GCP it's like a lot of partners who do this uh, stuff instead of GCP uh, having its own internal service to do it or tool to do it they have advisories or best practices uh, these are Migvisor, Stream, Cloud Zone and Cloud Reach are one particular options I would uh, pause so that you can just take a look and get an gist about uh, this particular information uh, of what this particular various tools are uh, they do that okay how they will help you otherwise you can just pause and see it and this is the tool which i was talking about comprise so uh, which is used for transporting your nosql or uh, data from your own mesh to uh, gcp so this is how the ui looks and it also do the same assess analysis of how much data and then what would be a, a alternative solution or uh, the corresponding solution on uh, gcp and it would also have uh, the same cost how much you're gonna say because the whole meaning of moving from on-premise to uh, cloud is cost saving okay and uh, and choosing up the right workload because you don't want to over oversizely you know or over utilize over uh, spin a resource which is oversized which is you you're not going to consume for over a month okay so these particular tools or analysis which would really help you uh, for uh, getting the insights about what would the cost uh, you would be saving if once you're uh, moving your workload from on-premise to Azure or Azure, AWS or GCP. So this is one particular per, you know, specific example where all of these assessment tools or the analysis tools will have uh, the same factors of showing up the chats and uh, and and if you go ahead like some some of uh, the assessment tools will also say the backup how, how much frequency of the backup would be done and everything and as i said you know uh, we require offline capability in cases of uh, uh, like your data goes from 100 tb to it you would your data ranges from 100 TB to 450 or 480 TB, then you can use this particular method of offline uh, where uh, like you can choose your own disk, you can send your own disk or you can uh, ask your uh, vendors like, like uh, either Microsoft or uh, GCP wherever you want to onboard. So in case of Microsoft, you can see this is one particular uh, uh, device which is sent by Microsoft and basically these are uh, what I can say is like uh, uh, these are sort of uh, uh, the data data storages, but uh, the, this they store data in pegabytes. Okay, so you can use this particular uh, drives for you know choosing uh, choosing for offline uh, or copying your data from your on-premise to cloud. You just uh, you just give you uh, give this particular machine to your administrator. He will copy all of your data from your local. Uh, and then and then when the corresponding vendors will have the responsibility of taking it securely and uh, pasting it onto your uh, the cloud alternative storages so this is one example of uh, aws snowball where you can see this they, they they has petabyte of data obviously there would be if they are high secure and then the encryption which would be written uh, like all of the data which you're gonna paste would be encrypted and then would be decrypted and then uh, it would be you know copied to their particular data centers so this is one way see how uh, so it's it's a size of a cpu or we'll just go plug in with your network and then you copy all of your data uh, it may take over hours two days but yeah you will be able to back up all your petabyte of petabyte of data and this is with the google cloud where you can see they also have very similar storage option which would be given to customer customer need to mm -hmm. just copy it and then send them back to this so this is what we talked about, uh, you know, the data migration 
tools which would help you in deciding uh, like which particular option to choose and uh, in order to know more about the hybrid we will be uh, conducting another session where we will be talking about more about the hybrid data migration solution okay i uh, hope uh, you understood the concepts and uh, thank you for listening to me if you like and like Ashok guy and the information which I've shared, uh, please put on your comment and subscribe.